Hi there, and welcome back to The Fuse Show. I'm one of your hosts, David Tran, and I am also the co-founder of a business called Exfusion.io. Today, I'm joined by R2 Ha Ha, Ha Ho of Trust Mary. Um, he's a co-founder and CMO, and they're building a, t- a testimonial tool for lead generation. Uh, thanks for joining us the show. Thank you very much, David. I'm really happy you invited me to your show, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. What led you to the world of testimonial marketing? So, uh, yeah, our story started in 2016, and uh, our initial service was video testimonial service. So we were producing thousands of uh, video testimonials in 20 different countries. And uh, and, uh, what led us to, and then we transformed to be a software company in 2020, and uh, that's where we are at the moment. But what led us to actually start business with video testimonials was uh, uh, our experience in uh, sales and marketing, we noticed that uh, that's maybe one of the most efficient ways to build trust uh, when you are talking with your prospective customers. So, uh, and then it was very difficult at that time to to find a service that you, you can easily get the video testimonial, uh, real authentic video testimonial. So then we founded a company uh, in Finland and uh, yeah, here we are. At the moment, that's kind of the story in short. So before you were working on video testimonials, what were you working on previously? Yeah, that's uh, I was actually in uh, like jumping from uh, uh, from a big IT corporation from the sourcing side to found a startup and uh, start selling. So that was quite a big change to me personally. Uh, the other founders, we had uh, uh, five co-founders at that time. and. Uh, and so they were coming from different backgrounds. So sales and marketing mainly. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's the background. So what led you to want to make that that jump? That's like probably one of the biggest jumps you can make, like professionally. Yeah, I was uh, like when I was studying, uh, I I was also uh, an entrepreneur at that time. And then uh, after I finished my studies, I jumped to corporate world for a few years. Um, but then, like, uh, I enjoyed the time there, but still I kind of felt that I'm more a startup type of guy. Uh, mm. I have, like, a little bit more control what I'm doing, what I'm, um, like, doing a lot of various things, et cetera. So, yeah, I've been enjoy- enjoying the ride now for five years. So it has been, it was a good move at that time, but also I really appreciate the experience I was able to get from the corporate world. So when you were leaving your corporate role, out of all the businesses you could have chosen and all of the different domains you could have tackled in the world of entrepreneurship, what makes you feel like testimonials are so important to you? It's so, uh, like the benefit, the value you are getting uh, when you're doing sales, when you're doing your marketing and you have a really good testimonials easily available. It's just so clear mm-hmm. the value what you're getting. So that was kind of the, like when uh, when uh, one of our co-founders was uh, talking to me into this idea, I think it was like uh, pretty much in a few minutes, I was like uh, sold because that like what they were, they have been thinking and what they have been trying, it was like uh, very straightforward and clear about what the value is. So I think that's, that's got that got my attention. How'd you meet them? Are these other co-founders? Uh, there are uh, one of the closest was actually uh, who who, uh, who talked to me about this idea first. Is uh, like our wives are sisters, so we have kind of the family connection there. And then I didn't actually even know the other co-founders at that time. Um, and then, yeah, I, I didn't have any other connection. But then the other uh, co-founders, they have been studying in the same school. So uh, so that that's uh, their connection. Hmm. Did you know them all um, personally before working together? Or did you get to know each other as you started working alongside one yeah, another? Yeah, I personally only knew one of the co-founders. And then the other, okay. uh, I only get to know after we started doing things together. But yeah, we have, uh, since then we have been pretty good friends as well. So it, it's, uh, it seems, seems to be a good fit, uh, for five years. 
in those early year of the five years, you were, you were bootstrapped, is that right? Yeah, we, we bootstrapped until uh, September this year. So a month ago, we published our uh, first funding round. So first, um, like it was totally different kind of business when we were only focusing on video testimonials. It mm-hmm. was kind of more like a professional service type of uh, uh, business. And uh, all the money we, we were making with video testimonials, we uh, invested in uh, software initiatives. And then 2019, we like in the end of 2019, we launched the first version of our uh, current platform. And, uh, and then we started a transformation to become a software business. And then when the COVID hit, we accelerated the transformation and, and kind of uh, pivoted to be a 100% software company. Uh, in one month, so that was, uh, yeah, that happened a little bit uh, more quickly than we expected. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, we started the journey already to become a software company before before the pandemic. So when you are working on the more service side based, the service side of the business, what exactly was the deliverable that people were coming to you for? Yeah, you could, uh, you can, you can get. Uh, video testimonial anywhere from Europe or North America, uh, like uh, only by providing 30 minutes of your time and contact details. So then we Mm. took care of the rest. And then we delivered high quality, premium, uh, authentic testimonial video to you and then uh, guided you how to use it in marketing and sales. And at what point of the process did you want to start thinking about prioritizing it? Um, like, uh, did you say prior? Uh, what time of in your company's history did you want to turn that service into a product? Uh, yeah. So at some point, uh, like from the beginning, like our idea was that we provide a platform that you can get the video testimonial anywhere in the world with one click. That was like our vision in the beginning. But we just started doing it as a service um, uh, because that was like uh, no no any funding etc. So that's that's like the most reasonable way to start. So we were aiming to be a kind of the platform or software business uh, from the beginning. But then at some point when we were producing those video testimonials, our customers started to ask if we would provide uh, also like kind of uh, quick quotes. Uh, like short comments, et cetera. Hmm. So then we kind of uh, started working on that with our our development team. And then uh, slowly we kind of glided towards to be a software company and then the pandemic hit and then we did the final turn in one month. So, yeah. What was the, what was the process like of going? So I think the, the world of creating videos and the world of creating software like they obviously overlap with the product, but in terms of like the domains, they're really different. So what was it like, like hiring and working with, I guess, the first few engineers who are building the early stage software? Yeah, we have been uh, like one of our co-founders had a really good contact uh, uh, developer. He had been working a lot together. And um, so we were kind of lucky. We had a really good contact, and and uh, luckily he had also a little bit uh, time to to like work with us as well. So that's how it started in our case. Uh, so through the contacts we had in our network, and uh, and yeah, and and then again we have been really lucky because he is our lead developer at the moment, still working full time for us. And uh, he's just a genius uh, with with all the all the stuff he's doing. So so that's uh, that's how it started in our case. And um, and yeah, I, I a little bit feel to be lucky with uh, with the start. And you said, if I heard you correctly, you're at over a hundred team members now. Uh, at the moment, we are actually uh, thirty. 30, okay, my, my apologies, yeah, 30. Okay. 30. Around 30 employees uh, at the moment. And then we we like to utilize like uh, partners quite a lot. So then we are using, we have a lot of different kind of partners in marketing, and also mm-hmm. in development and, um, and lead generation, et cetera. So. Gotcha. 
So when it comes to like how those 30 people are split into different departments, like what's the rough percentages? Um, one third is uh, sales, one third development, uh, and then rest of the people are kind of uh, management, marketing, uh, customer success. That's, that's, I would say, is the share at the moment. So when you think about marketing, for your company what are what are some of the things you've done for marketing that have like really moved the needle in terms of like building out your brand adopt, like building out lead generation building up um like a, a like a roster of actual paying clients like what what have been some of the more successful campaigns yeah i would say the number one uh has been our seo so we started working on that uh in the beginning of uh, 2020 so we were starting from zero and then uh, during the next 11 months, we were able to uh, like get like 50,000 um, organic visitors on our website in 11 months. <laughs> and like, I, I think that was maybe one of the most successful marketing, marketing initiatives. Uh, we have, uh, we have always had a really strong sales. So uh, how we started with the software as well, it, it has been quite sales-led, but now we are very excited to uh, to launch a new, more like a product-led uh, product in, uh, in, in a month or two. So we are really hmm. excited uh, and we are preparing for that at the moment quite a lot. So that, that will be something I think uh, really cool. Can you give me a preview of what it's going to be? Or is it still under wraps? Uh, maybe, I can, maybe, maybe I can share something. So it will be uh, targeted to marketers. Uh, it will be uh, kind of very, like, uh, it will be like a testimonial, testimonial tool, like very easy way to, to collect all of your testimonials in one platform and then uh, create really nice looking widgets and publish them easily uh, on your website and have a really like uh, kind of to outsource your testimonial web page. Mm. Uh, so I think that's, that, that will be, at least those kind of things will be there. And, uh, and it's a really kind of uh, low barrier to start using it. Uh, and, uh, and we are aiming to like to create the value or show the value for our customer like in seconds, that's kind of our, hmm. our maximum in minutes. So that's kind of what we are aiming for with the, with the new new product. But yeah, it will be, uh, we have been mostly like selling over a full suite so far, but now, but now with this new product, it will be really targeted to specific uh, use case. And, uh, and then hopefully we are able to like uh, generate even more uh, traffic attraction uh, with that. So. Hmm. That's that's the plan. Do you so when this project was in its or like planning phase, was this primarily like led by the product and engineering team, or is it primarily led by the marketing team, or did you two like collaborate? Like, what what did the plan look like? Yeah, it's um, there is um, like marketing. Marketing. Uh, I think it has been mainly collaboration between marketing uh, development team, our product owner. And uh, then our uh, like management or CEO. So I think it has been really kind of cross-functional, uh, cross-functional uh, collaboration. What we have been doing, and, and that's uh, maybe the the only way to do it actually successfully. But uh, but yeah, we will see. That uh, we are very excited about it at the moment. Okay, you're taking a step back under the domain of marketing, you you were telling me how earlier. SEO is something that was really successful. Is that one of the projects that you led? Uh, that, that was actually uh, the project my colleague Alex led, uh, like mm. in, the, in the beginning. Now I'm, I'm uh, like I started being responsible for marketing uh, only this during this year in the in the beginning of this mm. year, so in January. So we started that project uh, one year before before I started to. Be responsible for marketing, but yeah, that's something. Now I'm responsible for 
for the whole marketing, and then I have hired an uh, expert to take our SEO to the next level. So, gotcha. so now we are finally, it, it was, we had a little bit kind of valley with the development uh, of SEO because we didn't have resources to invest in it. But now finally we are putting a lot of effort to SEO again and uh, really excited to see see uh, where we are heading with the new new resources and, uh, and uh, new goals. Do you have any tips that you would share with other people who are trying to build out their SEO um, for their businesses, like what are some things that you've learned that you think are worth sharing? Yeah, I can, I can, uh, like, um, share. I think you can, like, if you do a lot of Googling and uh, you like really learn what is uh, SEO all about, but then I can probably like share our like three main points, what we have been doing. So content creation is uh, like you just need to produce live content and the more quality content you do, then a better chance you have to rank with the, with the content. And, and then when you are thinking what kind of content we should uh, uh, produce, uh, like our model is that we have, we have identified like 10 to 15 different uh, kind of topics or keywords, which are like the most important for us. So then, uh, we we do uh, kind of the pillar posts uh, about those topics, and then uh, we do a keyword analysis to to find uh, hundreds of other topics, like more specific topics, and then we will link those to our pillar posts. And uh, and uh, yeah, you really need to create a lot of content, and uh, we use Upwork for finding uh, uh, writers for us for finding hmm. uh, those who can create some graphics for us. Um, that's, that has been really handy. Then, uh, and then of course you need to build some credibility for your website. So you need to get, get some links. Um, uh, but, but yeah, I think, uh, that's kind of the, like the main things we have been working on, on, I probably, when you were talking I probably about might, uh, uh, forget something, but, but yeah. When you're talking about finding writers in Upwork, I think one of the challenges I've seen a lot of other people struggle with Upwork is that I feel like it's completely like hit or miss. Is that something you've also experienced or do you feel like you have some sort of like working recipe that helps you like get a lot of great writers? Uh, yeah, you need to put some effort to your uh, job post in Upwork. So really define like what you want. There, is, there are a lot of like if you Google, there are a lot of examples. What is a good uh, job post? And, and there are also examples, like if you are looking for a writer, what, what makes your job post to be good, like uh, good and, uh, and then, uh, so you can just copy or like a little bit learn from those. And, and then what I did is that we, uh, uh, we got like maybe like 50 applications to our, our job post. So then, mm -hmm. uh, then I just, um, uh, interviewed like around 15 of them and then uh created uh, a test writing test paid test so i i ordered like uh a content from them and then uh analyzed those and then selected uh writers for us so that's that, that was the process how we did it so were you the one that vetted all of the quality of all the writing uh, there was um there 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 is um like, uh, for example, uh, the guy who is supporting us with the SEO, who is uh, really professional in on all of this, uh, he, he is uh, giving a very good support. Uh, but yeah, uh, and then we actually do the decision together. So we like, who, who are the ones we, we want to mm -hmm. collaborate with the long term, so. So wh how many writer I guess applicants, do you feel like you have to go through to, to get like a team that you are really happy with? If you're looking for uh, like a uh, couple of writers, for example, I think that's uh, like we, we got probably like 50 applications and then you just quickly, you can, um, you can just uh, archive quite many of those and then you just invite invite uh, the best candidates, most promising candidates and have a like 15 minute video call with them. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So yeah, in our case, I think that's uh, that were the numbers. So yeah, it takes some time, but if you are looking for someone to work with uh, in the long term, I think it's pays off. So make. Do you continue to work with them on a like per hour basis or per deliverable basis? And do you have, do you have recommendations for other people trying to do the same thing? Uh, it seems to be kind of the like many writers they prefer performance based, uh, and I, I would say that's also. So that's also something I'm, and we are a little bit thinking like, what would be the best uh, model to pay for them, and uh, what would be the best model for for them to get paid? Like I, I'm really looking looking for something win win. Uh, I don't think our rate is the best one, but uh, but yeah, we might use that uh, in the beginning, um, and then uh, kind of uh, get to know the, uh, with the writer. A little bit better, and then decide what is the what is the model we want to use. But but yeah, performance based, I think is is better. Okay. So that also have there been yeah, and over time that that also kind of uh, is better possibility for for a writer to to get better payment or for their work. It, other than SEO, what are some of the other channels that have had like an impact on your business to finding your like thousands of customers? Um, like, okay, so I mentioned sales, so that that has been really important for us. So just uh, finding mm-hmm. those uh, demo meetings and then uh, closing deals from those that has been the most important for us so far. Um, we have. Five. I'm going to pause you there for a second. In, in the world of sales, do you know like who was the target audience that your team was going after to like, I guess, like pitch the product to? Yeah, when we are when we are selling our full suite, uh, then it needs to be like co-founder, CEO, or someone who is in, interested in uh, in all of those areas we are providing. With platform, so uh, customer feedback, NPS, all that stuff, and the mm-hmm. testimonials, uh, uh, video testimonials, and then uh, optimizing uh, conversion rates on the website. So there there might be kind of customer success and marketing and, uh, and uh, product team, for example, involved and sales in, in that, that full suite, but then, so th- so that's uh, kind of the little bit the challenge to find the right decision makers. Uh, but yeah, that's also one reason why we are so excited about the new product because that's really targeted only for for marketers. So then uh, mm-hmm. we are expecting it to be a little bit easier to to uh, or shorten the sales cycle with uh, with the new, new product as well. So. How long is a typical sales cycle for you? Actually, I don't know. I, I haven't okay. been following that uh, recently, so uh, I don't say anything because I have uh, no idea at the moment. Hmm. And, and you mentioned how, uh, as of, I think, was it last month that you received funding? Is that correct? Yeah. What made you change your mind, or was it always your intent to raise funds at a certain point to accelerate growth? I think, um, yeah, it hasn't always been the goal, like we were, like um, when we had our uh, premium video testimonial business, that was how we generated our cash flow. Mm -hmm. uh, But then at some, like when the COVID hit and then the uh, video service business kind of pretty much like uh, stopped uh, in in March, 2020. uh, And then we were not like, Good enough with our software platform at that time yet to to really like have the cash flow uh, high enough. So that at that point we we started thinking that okay, uh, and also we we got uh, more excited to to become a software like hundred percent software business. So at that point we were kind of a little bit starting and considering the the different funding funding models, and we were kind of doing uh, pretty well. Uh, still with our funding, but then we mm-hmm. just felt that okay, we 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 need to go a little bit faster uh, if we want to reach what we are aiming for, and and yeah, then it actually happened quite quickly. So so uh, uh, I think yeah, we we started 
somewhere in May or yeah, somewhere in May, and then we closed the uh, term sheet uh, in the end of June, and then uh, then finalized finalized the DD process, and, and yeah, here we are. Okay. What are what are some of the things that you plan to do as a company now that you have funding, especially in the domain of marketing? Yeah, the most of the funding uh, will go to uh, our marketing and development. So yeah, we just uh, most of the funds we will be using to hire new, uh, great uh, employees in our marketing and uh, development team. A little bit uh, other other kind of hires as well, but the most of the funds will be will be used in marketing and development. When you think about marketing hires, what are some of the early marketing hires you think a startup should make once they are like at the point where they really want to accelerate growth? Yeah, it kind of depends. Uh, what is your uh, golden market strategy? I would say like what, what kind of resources or what kind of, uh, yeah, what kind of resources you need. In our case, uh, like uh, because SEO was something that we were really thinking that uh, that's like we want to uh, like we had some success with SEO already, and then we just uh, saw like huge potential in SEO. So that was kind of natural that okay, we need to, mm. we need to hire someone who is really experienced, and uh, and also uh, so we can get that to the next level. Uh, but then at the same time, I, I believe you need someone who is uh, who is kind of the growth hacker type of like who, who can run uh, campaigns really quickly and report results and try different things. Uh, mm -hmm. That's actually something I'm still still kind of looking for to to add uh, mm -hmm. at least one one person uh, to that kind of role. Uh, I'm now using partners for that, but I would like to have someone uh, in our our team. Um, but, uh, yeah, it kind of also depends, like, what are your, like, when you're, when you are a startup, uh, so what, what are your own skills and abilities to do? What are your strong areas? Uh, I don't have like a ton of experience of, uh, on a tactical level in marketing, like, uh, really like, uh, implement those things mm -hmm. and nowadays it seems that you need to have you need to be an expert whatever you are doing because everything is so like competitive etc so so then i, I just uh, thought that okay in our case i just need those those people who really know what they are doing and then i just focus on like the big picture but then in in for for some other teams it might be a different approach but uh, but yeah that's that. That's In terms of your strengths as a CMO, what would you say like some of the, tra the traits that you have as an individual that make you uh, good at the big picture? Like when you don't know uh, the tactical stuff, so then you need to be good in the big picture. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm good or not. We will see in, uh, in, uh, when, when we are going forward, but I, like I am, I'm kind of a person that I, I'm more kind of uh, like uh, generating ideas, developing ideas. Uh, uh, I, I I feel that I can kind of, I have a good kind of uh, business understanding. Uh, I have been entrepreneur by myself, and I have been kind of uh, in all, also in our company. I have been. Uh, doing sales, I have been responsible for finance, and I have been uh, founding our operations in the US, etc. So, so I think like uh, that experience is something that I, it's kind of natural for me to, to look at the bigger picture instead of like hmm. some specific channel, for example. But yeah, I don't know. Do you have a favorite source that you've gone to to like learn about the, all these different domains? Because I imagine in the world of start, you already named a couple of roles already, but like when you go from one role to another role to another role, like how, how do you like quickly learn that domain? Like, uh, like how, for like, how, how I learn, like, like what I need to know about SEO, for example, or what I need to know about, yeah. uh, let's say email marketing, etc. cetera. Um, 
Okay, I have uh, people in my network who who are experts in those areas. That's that's maybe mm -hmm. one of the most important. I have been talking with them. A lot of times they will send me links, guides, etc. Google is always a very good uh, help when you, you you just search for information. It might take a little bit more time to find uh, the best sources. Uh, uh, but yeah, for, for some of the stuff like Authority Hacker, um, those guys I, I think are useful to follow and read their their content. Um, what else? But yeah, for me it has been like uh, getting getting guidance from from the people in in my network, and then they have been kind of okay. You should probably read a little bit more about this. And then the most important, I would say, is learning by doing. So you just uh, mm -hmm. start doing, like if you want to learn about email uh, marketing, then you the, you just uh, use maybe 30 minutes for learning some basics, and then you just start running your own uh, first campaign. And then you will notice quite quickly, okay, most of the emails went to spam filter. <laughs> so then you just try to figure out something to avoid that, and then you start googling. Okay, uh, but yeah, and different kind of communities like uh, where you can find experts. But yeah, people, people okay. are important. Out of all the things you do within your role, what would you say is your favorite part of the job? Still, I'm uh, meeting customers. I'm uh, I'm uh, having customer meetings, so. Absolutely, that's the that's the best. Like it's that has always been like through the history, um, like the five years I've been working here, that has always been the best part. Uh, and luckily, I've had those pretty much uh, all the time. In the beginning, it was it was sales, sales. So it was uh, I, I had a lot of them, but then still I've had uh, them like every month at least. So that's that. Uh, that's that's the best part of the business, absolutely. Hmm. Okay. And then, uh, as it comes to like your personal mission, which could or may or may or may not be different from your company's mission, like what is your what is the big why in your life that like drives you to be an entrepreneur to do all these things within like the space? Um, I've always um, enjoyed to create like a starter business or or join uh, a business when, when it's still a startup or uh, like with like the field that you are creating something that uh, actually can last even though you maybe jump out of the company at some point but still like seeing that okay that's that's the company we started x, x uh, years ago etc so I, I don't know that's that's kind of uh, always been something I'm really excited about, like creating hmm. business from, uh, like having a good idea and then creating business from the idea. Uh, that's it. Okay. Do you have a like favorite set of books that like guide you uh, either at the personal level or professional level? A lot of books. Uh, I've been actually listening Listening a lot of books recently, um, or actually maybe the previous five years. That's how I usually, when I, whenever I'm driving or I'm uh, having some workout or anything, I'm most of the time I'm listening audiobooks. But uh, yeah, you, like starting from my very basics, like Tim Collins, Good to Great. It's always really good, uh, really good book. Like many, many of those like classic uh, starter books, uh, predictable revenue is kind of the good you want mm. to learn about sales and really like how, how to do sales. I've been spending like uh, consuming their content quite a lot, books as well. Uh, what else? At least those are something like popping up to my mind immediately. Okay. And the last question I have for you is what is something you've been learning that you wish you learned at an earlier stage or asked differently? What's, what advice would you give to like early stage uh, 
entrepreneurs? Like whenever you have an idea, just uh, like, uh, okay, first of all, talk about your idea, like uh, have brainstormings with different people and uh, then find out if you, if you are not the expert on that field, really like do your research and find out if that's really a pain point for someone. Like try to find those that, that, that it really is a pain, pain for someone. And then when mm-hmm. you find that, just uh, start uh, helping them. And then I think that you'll like always, uh, like you, you always need to have a little bit like uh, thinking or a little bit uh, something behind the idea. But then as soon as possible, you just need to start doing it because uh, it doesn't help anyone if you, if you just think about the idea in your head for, for months and months. So. So we, we have always had, like how we actually started our video testimonial business was that we had an idea that, okay, we want to do this kind of testimonials for our customers. And then we started selling selling the idea. And uh, and then when we closed our first deals, we started to figure out how we are actually going to do it and deliver it to them. But still, we were able to, like the deliveries we did uh, for the first customers, even though we didn't have any experience, of course, we had experienced video uh, video guy who did actually the work, but, uh, mm-hmm. but like how the, all the process works, etc. So still, they were really happy for what we were because we were solving their pain point. So, but yeah, sell first and then figure out how to deliver. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thanks for your time, R two. Yeah. Uh, I- I'd love to give you the stage now uh, for the people in the audience who want to follow uh, you or your company's journey. What's the best way for them to do so? Of course, our website, trustmary.com. Uh, uh, follow me, uh, following me in LinkedIn is, uh, we have, and, or our company in LinkedIn uh, is helpful, of course. So, uh, but yeah, I would say trustmary.com is something, uh, I don't know how long it takes, uh, to get this published, but uh, but in a couple of weeks there will be also a new refresh, uh, like fresh website published. Um, but yeah, I would say those are maybe the most uh, the best sources to really follow our journey. Sounds good. Well, thanks again for your time, R two. Thank you very much, David. It was uh, it was a pleasure to be here. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your invitation.